In this video, we're going to learn how to use the sort function in C++. So the sort function comes with the C++ standard library, and it allows us to sort arrays, vectors, and other random access containers in C++. So to use the sort function, we'll first have to include the algorithm library where it's defined. Then we could use it to sort, say, an array of integers. So here we'll say int array one is equal to, and we'll put the numbers from zero to nine in here in an unsorted order. So we'll say seven, two, six, zero, and one. And then we'll use the sort function to sort these numbers. So we'll say sort, and then we'll say array one, array one plus 10. So the first argument to the sort function is array one itself. And when we use an array like this as a function argument, we say that it decays to a pointer. So what's actually given to the sort function as a first argument is a pointer to this first element here. In other words, the memory address of this first element here. Then as a second argument, we use pointer arithmetic. Pointer arithmetic allows us to operate on pointer values. So because our array is length 10, when we add 10 to the array one pointer, we're getting the memory address where we wanna stop sorting. And we pass that in as an argument. Now we could print out the array elements just to check to see if they actually were sorted. So we'll say for int i is equal to zero, i is less than 10, i plus plus. And we'll use this counter variable in this loop that goes from zero to nine to print out each element in the array separated by a space here. And after that's done, we'll also output an end line as well. So we'll save this and run it. And now we get the array sorted in ascending order here from zero to nine. So it is working successfully. Now the sort function does accept a third argument. And the third argument specifies how we wanna compare the different elements in whatever we're sorting, in this case, an array. So what we could do is supply this third argument here. And what I'll do is say greater, open bracket, int, close bracket, and then open and close bracket here. And what I'm basically doing here is passing in the greater operator. And I'm saying that I wanna use this to compare elements. If we save it and run it now, the array is now sorted in descending order from nine to zero. So that's how we can sort things in descending order in the case of values like ints, for example. What we're effectively passing in as a third argument here is a function for the greater operator for ints. Now we can actually use the sort function to sort user-defined types as well. So by user-defined types, I mean things like classes. Because if we have a class like this, let's say class square, where our square objects are gonna have a single public member variable called side, for representing the length of a side of a square. We'll make a constructor to set that side member variable to the argument that the constructor is provided. How could we sort square objects using the sort function? One way we can do that is by providing a third argument to the sort function. And our third argument is gonna be a function we define, and that function will decide how to compare these square objects. The function has to return a true or false bool value. So we'll say bool, and we'll call it compare squares. And the function will accept two squares as arguments. So we'll say square X and square Y. And the function has to return true or false. And that's going to define how we compare our square objects. So here I could say return X dot side less than Y dot side. So the way our function is going to work is that if X's side is less than Y's side, we're going to return true. Otherwise, we're going to return false. And we could use this function to define how to compare our square objects for the sake of the sort function. Let's go over an example of sorting an array of squares now. We'll say square array two is equal to 
square six, square nine, square four, and square three. So we now have four square objects in this array. So we'll call sort and we'll give it array two as the first argument, array two plus four as the second argument because we have four squares in our array. And then we'll give it compare squares as the third argument. When we're done, we'll output the square sides in the now sorted array, just so we can confirm that it is sorted. So we'll say four int i is equal to zero, i is less than four, i plus plus, and we'll output each square's side in this array. So we can check to see that they are sorted. And we'll say C out and line here as well. So we'll save this and run it. And now we see that our square objects are sorted as well. We get three, four, six, nine. And that's because of that comparison function we defined there. It's determining how to compare squares. And so if we change this operator here to greater than, and we save it and we run it. That's going to reverse the sorting order when we call the sort function. So that's how we can sort user defined types. We can use the sort function with vectors and any other random access containers in C. So let's go over an example of sorting a vector. We'll say here vector int vector one, and we'll put numbers from zero to nine here again, three, seven, two, six, zero, one. And we'll call sort and we'll call it like this. We'll say vector one dot begin and vector one dot end. And so this first argument here, and the second argument here, they need to be random access iterators that define a sequence of values. Let's print out the vector once we're done. We'll say for int value colon vector one, and we'll output each value in the vector followed by a space. And when we're done, we'll output an end line. Now, if we want to use vectors, we have to include the vector library. So we'll scroll up here and we'll add that. And then we'll save our program and we'll compile it and we'll run it. And now we get that our vector is sorted as well. So the specific sorting algorithm used by the sort function is not actually part of the language standard. And so it may actually vary across implementations, but generally speaking, the algorithm used to perform the sorting is intro sort which is a hybrid of quick sort, heap sort, and insertion sort. So for a small array size, it will use insertion sort. But for larger array sizes, it will use quick sort by default, but possibly heap sort if performance with quick sort will be relatively poor. And the best average and worst case performance of the algorithm is n log n. So that's how we can use the sort function in C++. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.